Paint the picture then of, so, so a lot of these sales that you were making in pubs disappear. You have to quickly reorientate the business around home delivery. What kind of drop and then rebound in sales are we talking about? So this has been incredibly difficult for us and incredibly difficult for all businesses. We essentially lost 70% of our revenue overnight at the end of March. And at the end of March, we honestly didn't know if we were going to make it to the end of May as a business. Our own bars, our on trade partners, our expert business all pretty much decimated and it was a very, very uncertain times for us. And we did a few things. So we pivoted to a delivery service. So we started using our bars as hubs for the on-demand economy. That has really helped us. And we also wanted to show that business could be a force for good. So throughout this pandemic, we've used our distillation business to make hand sanitizer. And to date, we've made and donated over 500,000 units of hand sanitizer to the NHS and to healthcare charities as well. So, I mean, it's been difficult for consumers as well, James. The brew dog here in Berlin on Ackerstrasse was basically my living room, and then I couldn't go there for so long. Um, what, what kind of recovery do you expect? Are customers starting to come back? Um, are you starting to see uh, food and beer sales ramp back up? Or, uh, you know, how long do you expect it to be until you get back to the levels that you saw in 2019? Well, I guess we've got quite a unique perspective on this and that we operate in 20 different countries. And what we're seeing is that bounce back pattern is very, very different country to country. So Germany, for instance, has came back pretty positively. That's about 75% of pre-COVID revenues, whereas our US business is sitting at about 50% of pre-COVID revenues, so not coming back quite as strongly. The UK business is back at about 55% so far. But we think it's probably going to be 12 months until we get all of our business units back to doing the revenue numbers that they were doing before COVID hit. James, it's great to talk to somebody who co-founded a business that grew from small beginnings into the size of an operation that you have uh, right now. But do you fear that scale in any way might count against you? You pioneered crowdfunding. Uh, the, the image, the brand is, is, is something of an upstart in itself. Do, do you ever fear that... that if the brand became too ubiquitous, that that could in itself be kind of damaging? Um, no, I don't think so at all. So we set up our business in 2007 with two humans, one dog, and a big mission to make other people as passionate about fantastic beard as we are. And we want to share that passion with as many people as we can. We want to fly the flag for independence, for community ownership, for a new type of business, for setting a new benchmark in sustainability. And to do that effectively and share this passion, we need to scale. And we've always been about trying to impact as many people as we can with the business that we've built. What are you doing to, and I know you have, um, I'm, I may be a shareholder and uh, in, a, in a minimal way, just because I know you have uh, made it possible for customers to buy the punk equity, uh, into the punk equity scheme when they're, when they're at your bars and online as well. Um, what do you need to do in order to either stay alive or, or even expand now, James? I mean, are you trying to bring in more investors? Are you thinking about expansion or is, is currently survival the only thing on your, uh, on your calendar? Well, we're quite unusual in, uh, as a business. We are part owned by a community of 130,000 equity punk investors who are based all over the planet and they own almost 25% of our business. But at the moment, like many other businesses, we are in pure survival mode. And it feels like we're maybe through the teeth of the storm and we've done that in a way that we're just about intact, just about in one piece. But I think it's really difficult. Who knows what challenges we're going to face as a business over the next six to 12 months. Is there going to be a second wave? How much is the recession going to affect consumer spending? How much is consumer confidence shaken? How different is the hospitality industry going to look in six or 12 months' time? It's such uncertain times. And especially for hospitality, it's such a major employer. It's so important to the economy, but it's so important to the fabric of our society. That magic, that social connection, that escapism, these amazing experiences form such an important part of people's lives. Mm. And that is just not there to the extent it usually is at the moment. So tough for jobs, tough for people, tough for the economy. And 
we think there's going to be a few more storms that we're going to have to fight our way through before we're out the other side of this one. And James, you've talked about the sort of diverse investor base that you have. I wonder what the investors and those who own shares in the business essentially think about the way you don't mind, in a tongue-in-cheek kind of way, speaking out on politics. So uh, we, were, we were looking at, with interest at your uh, Barnard Castle eye test uh, beer, which, which followed some well-known political events here in the UK. I, I suppose you just saw this as a useful way to, to, to get in some marketing and also to, to fund the sanitizer production, I know. But do you ever think twice about the politics or does that come instinctively? Uh, we never think twice about anything. We stand up for what we believe in. We wear our heart in our sleeve. And so many companies are scared to take a stand for what they believe in. We are not scared. If we've got a point of view, we're going to share that point of view with the world. And I think that beer made a very important statement at a very important time, which was if the people making political decisions for the country do not understand the consequences of not abiding by the rules they impose, what impact does that have on the entire population of the UK at such a challenging time. So that beer, although it was tongue-in-cheek, I think had a very important message. It was also the most demand that we've ever seen for a beer. So it completely crashed our website for nine hours. We ended up selling 650,000 cans, and that enabled us to make and donate an additional 100,000 bottles of hand sanitizer to the NHS. Wow, that is, uh, that's impressive. I know you're also, of course, uh, you have a great location in Columbus, Ohio, and you've got a beer that's linked to the Black Lives Matter movement. You've got a new alcohol-free beer, Pride AF. Um, so uh, you're very active in that sense. James, thanks so much for joining us. James Watt is the co-founder of BrewDog out of Scotland, um, but really now around the world.